The land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Wendat, the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Mississaugas of Scugog, Hiawatha, and the Otterville First Nations, and the Métis Nation. This territory was the subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and the Ojibwe and allied nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. The treaties that were signed for this particular parcel of land are collectively referred to as the Williams Treaties of 1923. We recognize and deeply respect their historical connection to this place. We also recognize the, co the contributions that indigenous peoples have made, both in shaping and strengthening this city in particular, and our province, and our country as a whole. Good morning and welcome to all of you here in person and joining us online. My name is Shelley, and it is a joy to be here and worship with all of you today. Just a reminder that all of our COVID protocols remain in effect. That means no singing, no passing of the peace. All of our responses are whispered. When it's time to come forward and receive of the Eucharist, the sides people will begin at the back of the, of the church. You will come forward. You'll stop at that line. I'll say the body of Christ. You'll say amen. You'll come to where the cross is on the floor. I'll administer of the sacrament. On either side, there are X's where you can remove your mask and consume of the host. Let's take a moment of silence as we center ourselves and prepare ourselves for worship. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. Please stand for our opening hymn. Dear friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Join us together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may become a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. The first reading, the first reading is taken from the book of Job. There was once a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, 
one who feared God and turned away from evil. One day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. Then Satan answered the Lord, skin for skin, all that people have they will give to save their lives. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, Very well, he is in your power. Only spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a potsherd, with which to scrape himself, and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 26. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind, for your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession round your altar, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with those who thirst for blood, whose hands are full of evil plots and their right hand full of bribes. As for me, I will live with integrity. Redeem me, O Lord, and have pity on me. My foot stands on level ground. In the full assembly, I will bless the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's every being. He sustains all things by his powerful word, when he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world, about which we are speaking, to angels. But someone has testified somewhere 
What are human beings that you are mindful of them? Or mortals that you care for them? You have made them a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now, in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are comfortable and able. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Some Pharisees came, and to test Jesus, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has done together, let no one separate. Then, in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and bless them. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, everyone. Little Johnny and his friends were excited to be visiting a place each week where they learned the importance of sharing and volunteering. Now one day, the place where little Johnny and his friends were helping at decided that they wanted to have a special lunch for all the children. There was going to be cookies and many other treats. Now one of the volunteers wrote a sign and placed it in front of the cookies. It said, God is watching, so only take one of the cookies. Seeing this, little Johnny and his friends, they looked at the sign. They contemplated the directive for a moment and took just one cookie each. A while later, 
someone noticed a new sign appear. It said, go ahead and take two of the apples. God is too busy watching the cookies. <laughs> and I share this joke, not only because I find it very humorous, but because I find some telling truths in this joke. In this joke, we see the way that children can be dismissed as not being able to understand simple instructions. And we see the way that little Johnny and his friends approach faith with joy and innocence and some humor. And it is an interesting juxtaposition where we see a firm intention of wanting to impose a rule and seeing how a rule can be seen and understood by those who the rule is being imposed upon. Our gospel reading for today is an interesting account of how rules are understood and applied. Now this passage of scripture has sometimes been misinterpreted, used to harm people, often women, throughout history. However, I think it's important for us to consider holistically what Jesus is actually saying. Now the religious leaders are trying to trick Jesus to catch him off guard. And Jesus is aware of this, and it would not be the last time that such an event would occur. What Jesus does is to try and explain how the law in question has been set up to provide an advantage to those with power. Now in the ancient world, particularly in Jesus' context, men were able to declare that they wanted a divorce for any reason. And while there, have, there may have been reasons for wanting a separation, often when a divorce was decreed, the women and children who were impacted were quite often cast away without a lot of thought or care. Indeed, Jesus is again speaking out to look to those on the margins so that they would be protected. Jesus is also challenging assumptions about how aspects of our faith are to be looked at and understood. Jesus knew that this question on the lawfulness of divorce would cause uproar and division. Yet Jesus answers within the context of what is being asked. Jesus reframes this question as one that looks at the intention of a situation to ensure that people are not harmed. And indeed, in the canon of scripture, there is not just one simple point of view for what is permitted regarding the parameters for divorce. Divorce is seen as something that can happen for many different reasons. This is just a reality in the world. But this does not change the truth about God's love or care for all people, regardless of their marital status. And as I had stated earlier, while this particular scripture has been used to cause hurt to people, it's important to look at the ways that Jesus is providing healing in this passage. And we see this healing as we continue in our gospel for today. Now, as we hear later on in our gospel, we see how Jesus creates space for others, particularly those who may otherwise be seen as unwelcome. Now, this would be children. We read that people were bringing their children to Jesus, and the disciples were quite upset by this. Yet Jesus proclaims that the children are to come and to be welcome. Indeed, Jesus proclaims that the kingdom of God is to be received as if one is a little child. This means that we come to understand God's kingdom with excitement and with love and with compassion. We do not look at human-made exclusions that may cause exclusions towards other people. We look to the joy that comes from being a people who welcomes others and helps others where possible. This is an act of healing because Jesus is giving worth and value to those who would have been seen as not having very much worth in the ancient world. Children at times were seen as without worth in the ancient world because they didn't maybe contribute to society in the same way that others might have. Yet, Jesus saw them as worthy and valued. And this is a moment of healing in our scriptures 
Because again, we see God's care for all people. All are valued and love. Human-made divisions and barriers have no place in God's kingdom. Likewise, when Jesus modeled this care to his disciples, he changed the way that worth was considered. Worth was now something to be seen as intrinsic because all people are created in God's own image and likeness. Nothing can ever separate us from God's love. And being reminded of this in our scriptures can help us when we encounter difficult and challenging moments. I think our challenge is to remind ourselves to look to where we see the signs of grace in our scriptures. Even when we get to challenging scriptures like today, we look to where God's grace can be found. And today, we see this through the way that Jesus desires to care for those who are at a disadvantage. And Jesus wants us all to be aware of God's care for all people and invites us to challenge our perceptions of belonging and welcome. Indeed, in God's kingdom of worth and dignity, Jesus wants us to see this new way for ourselves where we do not allow unjust divisions to separate us. Looking at how we can allow ourselves to be present as we experience God's grace helps us as we continue to protect those in our society who need our help and care. What are some examples that you can think of this morning where we can allow ourselves to be opening and welcoming? Where are you finding the good news of Jesus in difficult and challenging moments and scriptures? Where can we promote God's healing? I think that thinking about these questions will help us to further understand Jesus's call for us to receive the kingdom of heaven as a child does. I pray that we would continue to look for God's grace and care in all seasons and situations. Thanks be to God, amen. Please stand as you are able and comfortable. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. gathered in God's presence in faith, conscious that we have already been, given, been forgiven much and continuing to trust in the hope of our risen Lord, we pray saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we give thanks for this time of worship and we pray for the unity of the Christian church throughout the world. May all your children find unity and peace in your love. Father, 
In particular, in the world cycle of prayer, we pray for the church in Wales. In the national cycle of prayer, we pray for the diocese of British Columbia. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Flemington Park Ministry. In the diocesan social justice and advocacy cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Peter Scarborough, St. Philip on the Hill, Unionville, and St. Philip Etobicoke. In the Oshawa Deanery cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Thomas, Brooklyn. We pray for Linda, our primate, Mark, our national indigenous bishop, Anne, our metropolitan, Andrew, our diocesan bishop, and Rosilla, our area bishop. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish of St. Martin's, for Shelley, our minister, for all the varied ministries of this parish, for our Bible study group, for our cemetery committee. Bless all our parish families. This week we especially ask your blessing on Ed and Liz, Elizabeth, Hayden and Jackie, Joe and Wendy, Ron and Sherry. We pray that we will always support and build each other up in faith and love. We pray to you, Lord. Bless all those who are celebrating birthdays and wedding anniversaries this week, particularly on their birthday, Randy Alexander. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, bless those in need, especially John, Judy, Robert, Helen, Effie, Mary, Pinky, Ross, Bev, Mary, Kathy, as well as all those we carry in our hearts. Lay your healing hands upon them and may they have the comfort of your companionship all of their days. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we remember before you all the faithful departed, particularly on the anniversary of their death, Anna Maria Johnson, Rose Middleton, Mina Fowler. May their families and friends find comfort in your blessed promises, and may the souls of the faithful rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lastly, Lord, we pray for ourselves. Thank you, Father, for giving us the incredible gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, to save us. We pray that we, who have been forgiven much, will find the strength to forgive others in the same way. We thank you for your grace when we fail, and we ask for the strength to try again. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. All our prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. 
let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able and comfortable. Friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, everybody. Let us pray. God of truth, receive all we offer you this day. Make us worthy servants, strong to follow in the pattern of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living word, through whom you have created all things, by the power of the Holy Spirit. He took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you. And so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, 
holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread, gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is my blood, which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the gathering of your holy church. Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever, amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And those wishing to do so may make their spiritual communion by joining in this prayer with me now. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, may we who have been strengthened by this Eucharist remain in your steadfast love and show in our lives the saving mystery that we celebrate. 
This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you and the ones you love, now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. It is, as always, good to see so many people here this morning, despite the weather. Talking about the weather, at uh, 2 o'clock this afternoon will be the blessing of the animals. And those of you who have animals are probably glad that you're not going to be doing it outside in the rain. It will be on Zoom. Uh, any of you who need the Zoom links for any of the items that I'm talking about may pick up a copy of the bulletin on your way out, and all the meeting IDs and information are there. Uh, you've seen undoubtedly in the e-blast information about the rock garden and the painted rocks. Uh, there are samples of those at the greeter's desk on your way out. It'll give you a better idea perhaps than just the pictures that we may have seen. And if you would like to uh, uh, have a rock uh, personalized, uh, the uh, people doing that, Lee, Denise, uh, Debbie, and others, and Elaine, would be happy to do that. And the rocks will be on display under the altar next Sunday during the Thanksgiving service. Uh, so speak to Lee or Denise at the back after this. Uh, they also have tomatoes. Uh, yes, they do have tomatoes. This is becoming quite the regular thing. Good, good to know. Um, our Wednesday service uh, will be on Zoom at 10.15, as, as usual. Um, Reverend Shelley is continuing with her online faith formation program, Meeting Jesus in the Gospel of John. That's on Tuesdays at 7 o'clock uh, for the next two or three weeks. The um, Holly Bazaar, there's been a lot of debate and questions about the Holly Bazaar. The Holly Bazaar is going to be in person, in here. So this is, this is exciting news. Uh, there will be a bake table, and this is a fully in compliance with uh, diocesan and uh, provincial health regulations. Um, you, you, you buy the baked goods and you take them home. There's no eating in the church. Um, they will, the people organizing will be uh, Please to continue to receive donations towards Granny's Attic, uh, and they're happy to do that after each of the Sunday services um, from now until the bazaar uh, through the month of October. The date of the bazaar, by the way, is November the 13th, and it will be from 9 until 1 o'clock. Uh, also, particularly, they're requesting donations for the popular bottle boutique. Those of you who've been around here will know what we're looking for. Wine, ketchup, cooking oil, wine, fruit juice, wine. You get the message, okay. Um, and with that, I will invite Edward to begin our closing hymn.
Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.